It was at that moment, boom, I'm using this pain right now because I don't know how long my father's gonna be around. And I remember just sitting there eating a bowl of cereal, holding my boys there for the very last moment, just knowing that I'm gonna miss first this and first that. Matter of fact, the more I think about it, the more I get these weird butterflies in my stomach because it was a very nasty situation in my life. It is until you master this side of you to actually get you to change and implement, your life will always stay the same. So I got a challenge for you. For many of the subscribers to the Seven Fear Squad YouTube channel that want to become a first generation cash flow faith based millionaire, this challenge should be irresistible. Why? Because if you invest 20 minutes of watching this video, you're going to unlock this. Yes, fire. What in the world am I talking about? No, I am not talking about you being a pyromaniac at all or setting anything on fire. But what does fire have to do with becoming a millionaire? Well, because I want you to become and help you become a first generation cash flow faith based millionaire. I'm going to discuss in this episode three ways that millionaires use pain and turn it into profit. In this episode, the seven fish squad happening in three, two, one, let's go. Never short stopping, now I'm winning like I'm Jada. Steady through the rigor, yeah, I'm getting bigger. Just fighting in them trenches, now I'm making seven figures like. What's cracking, everybody? Money Smart Guy Matt Apollo here, healing to you from Dallas, Texas. Long shot from Oak Brook, Illinois, where we just recently moved here to Texas. But in this episode, I promise you, we're going to break down three ways that you can unlock this thing right here. Boom, fire, fire for the better in your business. And if you truly believe you are on that path and made that decision and made commitment to become a first generation cash flow millionaire, put it in the comment section below that I will be affirmations. I will be a first generation millionaire in the comment section below. And with that being said, I want to quickly remind you that our next journey, our next milestone collectively at the Seven Fear Squad community is to get to 150,000 subs because again, I will be giving $5,000 to a church or a nonprofit once we get to 150,000 subs. But the closer we get to 150,000 subs, I cannot wait to crowdsource and put a poll on who we should give this $5,000 check to in the name of the Seven Figure Squad on behalf of our community based on our growth and movement of becoming a first generation cash flow faith based millionaire. So if you got a church, a charity, a nonprofit that you love for us to support, please drop it in the comment section below. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel so therefore we can evolve this as we get to 150,000 subs. So without further ado, let's get right into today's episode. Now, if you are early with us this month, I discussed about a life-changing opportunity that millionaires never let go to waste. And in that episode, what they never let go to waste is this crisis. And many of you subscribers of the Seven Figure Squad YouTube channel had actually was bold enough to discuss what your challenges are, what you're dealing with. The comment section below was lit up with your responses. And I know we just went through the pandemic. I know we're still getting through the pandemic, hopefully getting towards a closer to closer post pandemic and getting out of these lockdowns. And many of people today are still facing financial pain, somewhat emotional pain, spiritual pain. A lot of pain is going around as we get through this pandemic. Well, today I thought I'd expand on a one key component of going through a crisis, which is simple. It's pain. Think of pain during a crisis as this, fire. And before you write me off as crazy, remember the challenge I had at the beginning of this episode was, hey, stick with me for 20 minutes and discover why. Now fire or pain can be used three different ways, very, very strategically. How? Let's get into one, which is spark. See, a painful moment can be that spark to get you to action. You see, everything can change in a moment. Now many of you have seen the news of California fires. How do California fires start when it's all dry and it's hot? It starts with one thing. It starts with a spark that ignites a fire and sets the whole forest on fire. Now, while it's true that we say that an overnight success takes about 10 years, making a decision to no longer accept mediocrity can be done in an instant. And sadly and unfortunately, until one experiences great deep pain, does one decide to change? I'm recalling a situation where I was serving in the Marine Corps and I get a call. Sergeant Major calls me up. Sapala, get to my office. Sergeant Major, Sergeant Sapala reporting his order. And he says, Sapala, sit down. Here's a ticket. You're taking an emergency leave. Your father just suffered a massive heart attack. Triple bypass. Open heart surgery is what they're expecting. Go home. I scooped up my two-year-old son. We headed to the airport. We landed in Chicago. And there I am in the hospital right next to my father as he's recovering 
from a triple bypass surgery. It was at that moment I said, you know what? I am no longer going to re-enlist in the military. I was thinking about not getting out. I was thinking about staying in, but boom, I'm using this pain right now because I don't know how long my father's gonna be around. I wanna make sure that if he is around, I'm taking advantage of the opportunity for me to get to know him because listen, growing up, I didn't get to really know my father. I didn't really get to have a conversation with him and I wanna take advantage of my time leaving the military to get to know my dad and wanted my children to get to know my dad because I never got a chance to know my grandparents as our family immigrated here from the Philippines. I don't know the grandparents on either side of our family. And I wanna make sure that this generation, the family that I am raising, they got a shot to have something I never had before, which is a relationship with their grandparents. See, at that moment, I experienced great pain and I decided to change. I decided to change the course of my career in the military, get out, pursue the opportunity. It wasn't necessarily a dream for me, pursue the opportunity of entering the insurance industry, going in business for myself, because I could do this right away, make money without having to wait three, four years ago to college, to get a degree and hopefully get a job to be more qualified, accept a higher salary at that time years later. But I had an opportunity right now to get out spend time with my father, our kids having a relationship with their grandparents, and I can have an opportunity right now to enter a field I never thought I'd get involved in, and that created great change in my life. And you know what? At that moment, as I look back, I'm so thankful of the situation that happened in my life, the things that happened into my life, because it caused me to make great decisions I never thought I'd make. And by the way, if you feel the same, drop in the comment section below, drop this affirmation in the comment section below. I will use pain to change. I will use pain to change. Drop in the comment section below if you will use pain to change for the better. Which leads me to number two, how pain and the fire inside you. By the way, I just love to know that you and I have a fire inside of us that doesn't have a gauge, that nobody knows how hot or cold that fire is. Which leads me to number two, which is a reminder as you're changing and as you're evolving, there's that saying that says the only time to look back is to see how far you've come. And oftentimes in this journey of change and evolution, you got this win, you got this win, dealing with this loss, going this win, dealing with this loss, this failure, this success, this win, this victory, this loss, this setback, this win, this victory. Sometimes it's easy to forget why you started or even what's keeping you going at this very moment. Now, when people think of fire, they think of something burning or cooking, etc., etc. But what they don't think about that before the invention of electricity is that fire provided light and life. See, that fire inside you can illuminate a lot of things inside of you that you quickly forgot. That fire inside of you will probably get you to do something you never thought you'd do before. And you say, wow, that fire really drove me. Wow, I did that, Bob. I accomplished this, what, I overcame my fears, I spoke in front of people, I called upon this person, I sat in front of this person, I closed a deal I never thought I'd close my entire life. You begin to evolve, why? Because you're using that fire inside of you to drive you. Sometimes in a process, because I know many of you aren't complainers, and some of the best of the best never complain along the way. But it's easy to forget sometimes how far you've come through the painful situations you've been through. Now, these are your positive whys or reasons that will drive you to achieve more. But the best of the best still remember those negative memories to continue to still fuel them, to get them to accomplish more and more and more, to get some distance away from that situation so they never experience that situation ever again. It's a reminder of the situations you'll never return to or the people that doubted you or the people that said, you know what, you'll never win. You'll never win. You're not gonna accomplish that. You're not gonna do that. And the failures that continue to remind you and test you and say, hey, do you really want this? You see, that's the way failure speaks to me. And one of the biggest setbacks that I've experienced in my life coming up in the business was a tough transition before I was leaving for a deployment. And at that time, I was going through a very, very rocky marriage slash divorce. Before going on that deployment, my ex did not want me to see the kids before I left. Anyway, to make a long story short, I was able to see my kids. And uh, there's this picture I have on my wall in my office. And I was going through a very painful situation. I knew I was not about to see my kids for a minute, uh, six months to a year, I'd not be able to see my kids based on what, what our deployment schedule was. And I remember just sitting there eating a bowl of cereal, holding my boys there for the very last moment, just knowing that I'm gonna miss first this and first that, you know, first day at this, uh, first experience here, first, you know, all the firsts I would be missing here in the next six months to a year. I would be missing out on that. And on top of that, going to the pain of a divorce, nasty. Now, this picture was taken and I have zero clue 
I have zero clue why this picture was taken while I was going through a painful moment. I was asking my aunt, because it was taken at my aunt's house. I said, Auntie Ruthie, do you know who took that picture? She doesn't even remember. She doesn't remember who took that picture, but somebody took the picture of my failure, my setback, a painful situation that I was going through. I remember being deployed and say, Lord, God, please get me home. Please get me home safe. And if you do, I promise you, you give me opportunity, you give me a chance to have a life after the military, I'm gonna do the very, very best to never get back to this situation where I'm away from my kids. And in the midst of all the current success that my wife and I have been having, the family that we're now raising, because I learned how to choose the right wife after many painful, bad decisions. I'm looking back at this picture is a reminder to me to never ever get back into that situation ever again, to not ever get close to the bad decision, bad choices, the lack of counsel, the lack of decision-making process, the lack of processing issues, to never get back to that situation ever again. Matter of fact, the more I think about it, the more I get these weird butterflies in my stomach because that was a very nasty situation in my life. And I know many of you have those nasty situations to as well. The question for you though is, are you converting that pain into the next thing I'm talking about, which is number three, which is transformation. See, in order to discover the next best version of you and to continue to push and evolve your maximum capacity, you must recreate yourself. You must constantly recreate yourself. Now, think of a phoenix. Now, in an instant, it will catch on fire and it will turn into ashes. But from those ashes is born a new bird, a better one, a stronger one, a more resilient one, a more powerful one. Now, in your case, that fire or that pain that many of you experience, either financially, emotionally, spiritually, it will cause many of you to kneel. It will cause many of you to receive that low blow. You're just knocked out. And for many of you, that situation can burn you to the ground. But I wanna remind you and encourage you today that you can raise back up from those ashes and recreate yourself stronger, better, smarter, wiser, wealthier, richer, more loving, more forgiving, acting with empathy and grace, and knowing that the hunger and the humility for you to say, you know what? I can still become better, that I can still discover the next best version of myself. And my friends, <laughs> this transformation is required if you want to achieve and experience new levels. Friends, this is part of the price for you to succeed and win. Otherwise, you're gonna stay stuck at the same level. Like we mentioned in a previous episode of Mortal Kombat, a game that I played, Sega Genesis 1, and when you started climbing up in the game, winning more of the matches, the most difficult, one of the most difficult matches you will face before you reach the other levels is the mirror match. It's you versus you. You, in order to beat you, must break the old patterns, recreate yourself, and develop higher and better efficient patterns so therefore the old version of you can be defeated. You see my friends, your habits, your patterns, your behaviors, even your beliefs must evolve and improve and somewhat change. The old version of you must get out of the way. Now as a personal story, one of the transformations that I've recently went through may not necessarily be financially or spiritually or emotionally, it has been physically. Here's why. After leaving the military, I was dealing with a lot of post-military injuries, uh, mental trauma, physical trauma that I just get any operations on or get any help with. And for literally 16 years, I stopped working out, I stopped eating the right foods, I didn't care, my body just withered away. Now I've got one of those weird body types where if I don't eat right, I lose a lot of weight. And by the way, my wife hates it when I say that, but just a weird body type I have that my body breaks down muscle and converts it into fat and it's hard for me to retain any muscle. It's just simply the way God designed me. And many others like you I know are out there too as well. And so anyway, make a long story short, I decided to take a physical, an executive physical in 2018 because you know, my wife wanted uh, uh, children. We were, we were had you know activities that we were going to be a part of, and I said, you know what? My energy sucks. I've been grinding it out, grinding it out. I've been burning candles at both ends. That's not good. I've been lacking sleep, lacking rest, lacking recovery, lacking nutrition, lacking physical health. I was able to overcome a lot of the mental health stuff, but my physical health, horrible. So based on this executive physical, I was told what type of foods I need to be eating, what type of exercise I need to go through, how to evolve through the injuries and the scar tissue. Uh, that, that 
pretty much locked up any of my flexibility and my ankles and my knees and my elbows and my joints. Hired a personal trainer. So therefore, when we had our son Jordan, I'd be physically capable to run after a newborn baby, a one-year-old, two-year-old, make sure I had the physical energy and capacity to make sure I can keep up with them. I mean, my physical health was so bad. Now, I used to dunk in high school. I used to take a basketball and rim rock to the point where I, I couldn't, in 2018, I couldn't even jump on a one-foot platform. My trainer's like, really? You can't jump? He's like, Matt, it's all mental. It's all mental. Milton worked with me. My trainer, Milton, he worked with me. He worked with me less necessarily physically, but more mentally to push my limits. I said, Milton, your job is to push my limits. And not necessarily physical limits, it's mental limits. And so we had to adjust. We had to be patient. We had to modify. But guess what? Eventually over time, transformation took place. In the age of 47 years old today, I feel I'm much more better shape than I was in my military years, in my 20s, and prepared for the next best chapters of my life physically. And the reason why, because I want to make sure as I'm creating this legacy, if I'm creating generational wealth, I also want to make sure that I transfer knowledge, experience to my kids, and one day, my grandkids, because I got one of those weird decisions to say, you know what, I'm going to be known to my great, 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 great grandchildren that I believe I'm going to create a trust fund. And we've already established it with a lawyer to make sure there's a Sapala family trust that's established to make sure generational wealth is transferred from one generation to another. And also not only the money, but more so the values and the principles and a mindset that went along to create it. At the same time too, I've also seen my mentor, Patrick but David. I remember his YouTube channel. When I came out to PHP agency in 2015, I remember value Tim was at 4,000, 5,000 subs. And then fast forward today, it's over 3 million subscribers to see my mentor being demanded by fortune 50 companies to be a consultant, to be speaking in Mumbai, India, where people are paying anywhere between 2000 and $10,000 to be in a two day conference to learn how to become a better sales trainer and leader for the organization. I've seen my own mentor evolve to become a Wall Street Journal best-selling author, number one on the Wall Street Journal list. And by the way, side note, you wanna hear about a fight between my wife and I, so epic? Yes, it made it to page 48 of your next five moves book, so go check out my mentor's best-selling book on the Wall Street Journal list, your next five moves. We'll put the link in the description below. But I wanna know for you, what's your affirmation if you believe that you're gonna discover the next best version of yourself, put it in the comment section below, and here's that affirmation. I will become the next best version of me. Put that in the comment section below. Write it, say it, believe it, internalize it. So, putting this all together, our spark, a reminder, and a transformation. These are three ways you can use the fire inside you that converts from pain and turn that pain to be profitable. So therefore, you become a first generation cash flow faith based millionaire. Now, if you embrace this and you master this, you'll rise above everybody else pursuing their goal to winning and mastering the money game. Why? Because anybody and everybody and anybody can learn the easy how to's. Very simple. In its simplistic, purest, logical form, winning the money game is so easy. How do I know? Look on YouTube. How many videos do you see it? How to make six figures, how to make seven figures, how to get rich, how to get wealthy. They're loaded on YouTube. So how come more people aren't getting wealthier? How come more people aren't getting richer? Even myself and our YouTube channel here in Seven Figures Club, we have hundreds of videos on how to make more money and how to create wealth for yourself. Because it is until you master this side of you, the pain, the fire, to actually get you to change and implement, your life will always stay the same. See this, this is how you take advantage of the crisis and conflict and pain that happens in your life and everybody deals with it. Now, if you want to listen to me expand on how to take advantage of a crisis, watch this video right here. And if you want to make sure that as you're dealing with this pain, this conflict, this crisis, what I'm telling you right now, that's victory and winning, challenging you to quit, to see if you really want it or not. So if you want to know how to never quit, check out this video here. To never quit, check out this video right here. Again, as a reminder, our next goal is to reach 150,000 subs here on the Seven Peer Squad YouTube channel. So please make sure you subscribe because once we get to 150,000 subs, we're giving away $5,000 to a church or nonprofit or a charity in the name of the Seven Peer Squad community. So please help us get to next goal so therefore we can cut this check sooner 
then later. That being said, guys, if you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you click like and follow our business page, Money Smart Guy. And if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click subscribe and hit notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. I'm your Money Smart Guy, and here from Dallas, Texas, and until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today. Thank <laughs> you.